Good day and welcome to Insight. Today, we're going to be talking to a survivor, a warrior, a lady who could have uh, walked away from it all and not even be in this studio. But she cares enough about those who care about her, even those she don't know. I have the pleasure of introducing to you Miss Hillary Webby. She is surviving a brain attack, as she describes it. We more commonly know, know it as a stroke. Good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, Miss Webby. How are you? Good morning, Michael. I'm very well, thanks. I'm alive, and I'm, it's my pleasure to be here with you. Ma'am, I have read your book, and um, I found it fascinating. Yeah. Um, I have wondered why somebody who didn't have to did. Why do you write this book? Why were you, you, you invited us into your house, into your church, mm -hmm. into your car, mm -hmm. into your family space? Mm -hmm. why, why, why you did this? Michael, I would say that God called forth this book from me because I am not a trained author, author, neither have I written before. This was placed in me by my God, and it's all for his glory. Well, ma'am, if you want to know if it's working, it's working. Um, I felt it. Yeah. So you sound like you're born again. Yes, well, I'm... I'm definitely a Jesus girl, <laughs> and I give all the glory to God, because well, he placed the book in me. Yeah, I thought that you were born twice. I tell you why. I, I heard your faith. I felt your faith coming through, because it's, the book um, is riddled with that. You, 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 can't, you, know, you can't come and get that out of it by itself, mm -hmm. or you can get your story as another, and then you can get inspirational reading by itself, all there in different forms. But um, the, the, the born again, what I'm talking about, is November 2015. Mm -hmm. We're going to trace a little bit. Take me there. Mm -hmm. Take me there. You were, as you say, you were top of your game. Then something happened. Mm -hmm. Walk us through, especially for those who have had a stroke, especially for those who have families with stroke and mostly for those who have never had it before. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. November 11th, I get it mm -hmm. right? 2015. Mm -hmm. You were born again. Mm -hmm. You're at a different normal. Yep. Talk to us about it. What happened that day? Where well, were to you? To be honest with you, I didn't even know what a stroke was. I thought it was something that old people got. You know, I didn't know what it was, and then boom, something hit me. And my life will, will never be the same yeah. because it sort of took away a lot of things. But there are certain things it didn't take away my capacity to love, my capacity to worship. So there are a lot of things. And, and it gave me some new things, which I was pretty surprised about. Yes, yes, yes. Can you recreate, if you may, for me, what were you were doing when, when, when this happened? I, you know, for those who read the book, mm -hmm. will. Know that your son played a pivotal role. Yes, I was with two of my three, two out of my three children. I was with Nicholas, my son, and Abigail, my youngest daughter, my wash belly. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. yes. And what happened? I was just chatting with them, and um, I had a stroke, and I didn't, I, I wasn't aware of it. I only heard my son asking me, Mommy, what happened to you? What happened to you? Why are you talking so? And that was it. Um, he had the presence of mind to move fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to you, 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 you described the different types of strokes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, did I get a pronunciation or schematic? It's ischemic. It's, it's, it's Ischemic, ischemic. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. you go. I sound like Doctor mm -hmm. Sharp. Ischemic. <laughs> That's the one you had. Yep. What? What is that one? That is when a blood clot blocks the um, blood going to the brain, and the the brain needs the blood, oxygenated blood, to keep going. Yeah. 
So when it says blocked off by a blood clot or right, then your brain is starved of the blood that keeps it going. So but your brain cells or neurons begin to die. Yes. So the quicker you get mm -hmm. attention is the... Yes. It is very important to get to quickly identify that somebody is having a stroke and get them to medical care as quickly as possible. Because the longer you wait, hundreds of thousands of brain cells are dying for each minute that you're untreated. Right. Oh, <laughs> um, so you had that. Is there, and upon reflection, mm -hmm. But this is a question that nobody's, everybody doesn't like Mark, Michael ask her that. Is it a way of life, a lifestyle issue? What causes, what leads mm -hmm. to it? What can cause that to happen? Mm -hmm. It is certainly a lifestyle if issue, Michael, because there are things that all of us need to do to make it less likely. First of all, we need to eat properly. We need to, if we have high blood pressure, which is one of the most serious risk factors, we need to be controlling it. We need to keep on our medication. We need to um, yeah, eat healthily, mm -hmm. get medical, keep a tug on, tub yes. on your medical, keep yes. a check up. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> Upon reflection, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you, you open the book too, you know, so I can't come in now. Mm -hmm. um, what were you doing that you think that would have mm -hmm. led to this? Well, I think that if I had been more faithful to exercise, exercise more regularly, which is very important. You're not attacking me, are you? You're not no. telling me that I'm, you know, no. I'm, I'm ready to go as... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, I'm going to start. But having regular exercise yes. is very important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it's... So it's not that people, when, when we see people do exercise, we think, oh, yeah, they want to live forever. But mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really not that. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's being healthy mm -hmm. while you're alive. Right. <laughs> you know, it's not an extension by mm -hmm. virtue of time. Yes. But it's a quality. Because my father had that stroke at 95. Wow. And it changed his life for wow. ever. Uh, because the quality was considerably reduce, mm -hmm. considerably reduce. Mm -hmm. um, you have written this book. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to. Mm -hmm. you, 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 let me just state it out for the public. You, you, you weren't struggling to find the means to get your therapy, to mm -hmm. go overseas, do anything. You didn't have to do this. Right. But you did. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you dared to share. What has been the reaction to this book? Well, I th I've been very encouraged by those closest to me. You know, they've cheered me on. They've encouraged me, you know. And when I thought, okay, am I being too open? I said to one of my friends, I wonder if it's too brawling, you know. <laughs> Should I like tone down some of the parts? Am I being too open? And one of my friends encouraged me. She says, no, when you make yourself vulnerable and write the truth of what happened, it's better. So, you know, after I check, did checks with a couple of close people, I said, is this too vivid? Is this too, too much information? Because sometimes I was worried, you know, am I, you know, putting too much in there? Exposing myself. Yes, you, you well. Literally, I, I am. Um, I'm glad you did. From 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 this perspective, in that it not only has caused us to be here to hopefully teach others that um, life doesn't end with a stroke. Mm -hmm. um, as you described it, my new normal. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? I heard Barack Obama with a lot of that, you know. Did he influence you in any way? Your new normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, how did that name come mm -hmm. about? You throw out other names, you you chucky and No, it just to be honest with you, it just just given to me. Yes, yes. Yes, because um, you know, as you go as I went through the recovery process, which I'm still going through now. Yes. I st I got a lot of time to reflect and sometimes sentences came to me, you know? Yes, yes, yes. And I realized that, you know, yes. wow, it's a privilege to be alive, number one. Yes. 
Many people didn't wake up this morning. So you stop taking things for granted, you know? When, this, when you open your eyes in the morning, it takes on a new meaning to be grateful, to be alive, you know? Mm -hmm. You stop taking anything for granted. Yes, yes. In other words, help me to number my days. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes, yes, that is, that is a serious one. When we come back, she's going to have to explain to me the medical treatment. And there's something in the book that I still don't understand about part of our head being cut out. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what I, what I was reading. I was like, what? I put it part of your bread, cut out, and you have to lie down straight and don't turn. We'll be right back on Inside. Welcome back to Insight. My special guest, Hilary Webby. On November 11, 2015, her life changed. She had a stroke. She says she's surviving. She says she's a warrior. She says she's getting used to this new normal. And it's a every day, did I say every day? A every second reality for her. And she has been willing enough to write a book to include us into her life. And I'm taking the opportunity to find out. But that I read the book cover to cover. And oh, there's one part of it that um, I, I, I need a medical expert on. <laughs> they, they cut out a part of your head. Mm -hmm. What exactly is that and what was that for? Michael, I had to hear this story from various people because I woke up in the hospital and to be honest with you, I didn't know until I heard the story told to me by my husband, by my doctor, by my nurses. So I myself was getting up to date on what had really happened to me. Yes, yes. So after the stroke, which is a blockage in blood clot that bl blocked the blood, bl blood going to my brain, my brain started to swell. Mm. I have to go by what they told me. Yes. And in order to relieve the pressure, well, A, to keep me alive, and B, to prevent any further damage to my brain, the, the Dr. Carl Bruce, who is an amazing doctor. Yes. And who you got to write a piece in the book. Yep. <laughs> so when I saw that, I was like, wow, amazing, amazing. Yes, he's a talented and amazing doctor. Yes. You, 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 you took out a piece of it. Tell me about that part, because I was like, huh? <laughs> you know. Yes, he actually had to take off a piece of what they call the brain flap, which is a piece of skull that would cover the back of the brain. So that was removed from my head in order to relieve the pr pressure in my head oh, so my brain, wouldn't, yeah, my brain wouldn't, the swelling wouldn't get damaged. My, mm -hmm. Yes, okay. In other words, the brain is swelling beyond the capacity of mm -hmm. your skull. So yes. you ease that off. Right. Um, you, you made reference to your husband, and if mm -hmm. you noted, I never brought up your husband, mm -hmm. um, who is a friend of mine. I claim mm -hmm. him to be a friend of mine. Um, we're talking about one Don Webby, I believe. Yep. Is that, that a person? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. We're talking about a gentleman who mm -hmm. um, sits in the Senate. Yes. Um, but long before that, he's known to be the CEO of Grace Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And. Um, and the love of my life, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, 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 um, I heard that ro all that romance going on in the book. Mm -hmm. So it has romance in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that, that's what's fascinating. Um, I, I've seen him in a different perspective now, mm -hmm. um, more elevated <laughs> um, in yeah. terms of his role, mm -hmm. um, his familial role, and mm -hmm. the support. And as you say, don't waste time and mm -hmm. say, let's do that and do that, including mm -hmm. the ramp yep. for, you to, <laughs> to, for you to move up your wheelchair. <laughs> yes. um, you, he, he brought you a, did he actually? A helmet. A helmet to, mm -hmm. to put over that part so the brain wouldn't leak out? Yep. <laughs> How did that go? Well, he wanted me home for Christmas. So That's the Christmas of? 2015. The same Christmas? The same November Christmas. November 11th? Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So 
Dr. Bruce said, if I had left the hospital before I put back my brain flap, bone flap, I would have had to wear a helmet all the time to prevent any damage. Because mm -hmm. no, there wouldn't be this skull right here. Oh, th this is the actual side you're pointing mm -hmm. on? That's yes. It? Right side. So here, he had to put it back on. If not, I would have had to wear a helmet all the time to avoid the risk of anything impacting uh -huh. my brain. So they, they cut it out and kept that part to put it back? Is that mm -hmm. is it like a jigsaw yes. puzzle type? Yep, I understand it goes to the blood bank and then when they need it back, it comes back. <sighs> and he screws it back on. Okay. And God bless Dr. Bruce, he told me that he screws it on so tight it couldn't come back off again. <laughs> He says that the people who are even watching him, how tight he screwed it on. The other people in the operating room. Allow, allow me, allow me a little levity here. So we can't say you have lost a screw? No. Nope. <laughs> All screws firmly in place. In. Yep. Fir firmly. And thanks, thanks to Dr. Bruce, uh, you know, it didn't drop back off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Dr. Bruce himself had a piece here. Mm -hmm. And I think it was in the final part that I, I realized that how serious this man is. Um, you know, the, the, he says, you know, we, need, we all need to be even more cognizant that our health is also our responsibility. Mm -hmm. We now need to look to those causes that we can prevent or minimize with lifestyle changes, diet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exercise, water intake, mm -hmm. <coughs> um, <laughs> stress reduction, mm -hmm. adequate sleep, guilty, and visiting our doctor for a checkup or executive profile. This can have a profound impact on saving our lives and limbs. Um, how did you get the doctor to write in a book? Do you, doctors don't normally do that. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Bruce is absolutely amazing and it's funny. Everybody who I have met during the course of my treatment has been so generous in trying to be making themselves available to help. Because Dr. Bruce is also on the board of the Stroke Foundation of Jamaica, which is being, which is germinating now to be born before this, before half of the, the first half of the year is over. We expect it to be come to life. What's the purpose of the Stroke Foundation? The Stroke Foundation of Jamaica is going to be a support system for stroke survivors yes. to give them holistic support, information, yes. um, you know, various types of support, spiritual support, various, you know, so yes. that because Having lived it, I can see that it's not easy. And I mean, I think to myself, there, might be, there are people out there who are the main breadwinner. They have maybe three hungry mouths at home to feed. Mm -hmm. And they may not have the support system that I have been fortunate to have. How do they do it? How do they go out to work before they have therapy and before they're, you know, firmly walking again? Hold on, let me, let me see if I understand it. The Stroke Foundation has come about because of you? A, a group of us have gotten together and we are forming the Stroke Foundation of Jamaica so that those who are not, do not have robust support systems or who may need additional support to help them to get about their regular life would have somewhere where they can get good information with ad reliable advice and various other types of support. So they will have ramps like mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Let, let's get this ramp thing out of the way. Yeah. Our good, good husband, <laughs> Mr. Don Webby, in his desire to see his lovely wife uh, go up and down the home, built a ramp. But lo and behold, this lovely wife that is here with us said the ramp too steep. <laughs> so she decided, well, according to her, if she went down and that, she would have, she didn't use the word King Pupalik, but should have ended up over in the neighbor's yard. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the imagery I got from that. But um, the, 
you know, accolades to him, he try a thing and he move fast. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that the foundation would come up with the specs in terms of if you're going to have a ramp, if you're going to do this. Bam. But this might be, you said people were generous. Is there anybody you didn't mention in this book that is alive that will help you? <laughs> I mean, Marsha the nurse, Sasha. Um, you, Roshi. You, who, who else? You, 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 the, the person owner of the supermarket, the, the dry cleaner, uh, you, you're, you're effervescent in, 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 in just your old people. Did you know she worked at Grace Kennedy for 31 years? Yep. 31, I got so that I number right. Rush, rush there you go, life. wow, I read the book. <laughs> 31 years. Mm -hmm. Is that where you met Mr. Webby? Nope. Oh, okay. I was there 10 years before him. So you seen him as it really, as mm -hmm. a staffer. Mm -hmm. There you go, yes. Don. <laughs> no. But um, you, you hailed everybody. You gave back, you, 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 you. What's, what's, what's with that? You could have written a book and put it in the back. Well, to be honest with you, I had so much support that I was over, overjoyed and overwhelmed with the love that I got and support. And the transition you have made for the foundation is to say, let's see if we can replicate this for others who might not have it naturally mm -hmm. as I had. Because yes. you had a loving family long, 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 mm -hmm. long time. Yes. You had a great support team long, long, mm -hmm. long time. Yes. And um, is it your uncle who is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uncle Jimmy. Solomon. Jimmy, my body knows Jimmy Marsal is a household name. JF, Grace Kennedy, UWI, mm -hmm. um, now the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, so his name is Household. Mm -hmm. um, the Webby's name is Household. So you, 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 you don't lack friendship, you don't lack, but you're, going, you're taking this thing to another level. You're not tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, God is at the center of it all. But the networks of love that God has given to me have, so, have held me up. Let me, let me trace it for just in case people are just joining. One, <clears throat> her name is Hilary Webby. She was in her 50s when she got a stroke. Mm -hmm. Her husband is Don Webby. Uh, she has three children, one of whom I know, <laughs> um, because my son and he um, shared the same class at one time. Mm -hmm. um, I can't claim to have known you before. I might have seen you, um, but I won't claim that. But you're, you're, I know your support system is strong. Uh, this lady bothered to write a book, giving some details that normally people wouldn't give of themselves, sharing photographs, you know, of her family, bringing them in. I'm gonna put something to you. I don't know you're gonna to react to this. The stroke that you got mm -hmm. was for a reason bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. If it were an exam, I'd say discuss. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, in the stroke was a door that God opened for me to walk into my purpose in life. That is what happened. All right. Very well. I'm going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to deal with a little issue of who she is. I want to remove her from this stroke. Who she is. Where she born. Who she grew up with. That type of thing. We'll be right back on Inside. Welcome back to Insight, Hilary Webby. She's a survivor of a stroke. She described it as a brain attack. Never thought of it that way. But um, when you get a brain attack, it can take you down in so many other ways. And that was explained quite well in her book, My New Normal, Reflections of a Stroke Survivor. And um, Jamaica has a lot of stroke victims, a lot. So it's important that you um, 
take a keen listen, get the book if you may. And um, so you too can be inspired and understand how important it is. But before I get into her, um, who she is, um, the big news out of this interview so far is this stroke foundation that is to be formed by mid-year. Mm -hmm. um, I read in the book, Jimmy Moss Solomon mm -hmm. suggesting to you that perhaps you shouldn't start a foundation from scratch. Mm -hmm but place it under the JFK Foundation, mm -hmm. if you may. GK. Yeah, GK. Mm -hmm. yeah. JFK. Mm -hmm. <laughs> GK Foundation, if you may. Um, you have disobeyed your uncle. Mm -hmm. Yes, why? Well, there's a good reason in, there's a lot of regulatory um, requirements for foundations, which bring along costs with them and make it prohibitive in some cases. So, in collaborating with the Grace Kennedy Foundation in certain ways, we're gonna be able to save tremendous amount of cost and- Okay, like the overheads. Yeah, and regulatory and arm. Yes, yes. Statutory yes. arm requirements that come along with having a non-profit. Okay, but you still will have a foundation Mm -hmm. We're going to have a standalone foundation, Stroke Foundation of Jamaica, but we're going to be having a strategic alliance with Grace Kennedy Foundation. So we'll be able to share, for example, administrate, administrative costs, um, accounting, certain backroom functions that we will no longer have to have as expenses. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's still a relationship. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a rank and there's a mm -hmm. family divide. And I was nope. going to get it. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> Never ever take me that serious. Um, this little girl, um, Hillary, where was she born? Born right under the clock in Kingston. Mm -hmm. you, Victoria Jubilee? No, at um, St. Joseph's Hospital. Okay. No. Kingston. In your town way. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. And you grew up with whom? I grew up with, with my p two parents, Peter and Betty and Mas Solomon, who showered us with love and who still shower us with love. I grew up in a loving family with two siblings, well, one for the most of my life, and then we got another little gift. Yes. My baby sister, who I'm, I'm a junior parent to. Ah, uh, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> junior parent. <laughs> What's going on here, a yes, junior so parent? so my parents, provided for us a loving, stable home mm -hmm. where we were very loved. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And um, you went to which school? St. Andrew. St. Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can, can my cameraman get a close-up of her when I ask her again which school she went to and watch her behavior? Mm -hmm. Which school did you go to? San Andrew High School. No, the cameraman. Ah, let's do it again for mm -hmm. San Andrew. <laughs> I'm pr a proud San Andrew girl, and yes. my mother and my grandma are San Andrew girls too. Oh. There you go. We have to give we have to give them that little that little shout out there. You know, San Andrew. You know, they they, they, they have this thing, nasal thing when they go San Andrew. But there you are. There it continues. Um, then you went on to where? You in? Yeah, you did what? You? I did uh, management studies. Okay, there you go. And then to where? And then I went to University of Western Ontario in Canada mm -hmm. to do my MBA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I saw the photograph. I saw the photograph of you looking into his eyes. You know. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, I saw the photograph mm -hmm. of a little gentleman by the name of Don. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, my Don. I don't think I don't think this camera can even pick it up. You know, I mean, that's all right. The what happened? You tell us that story. That was a love at first sight story. Love at first sight. Mm -hmm. Quite romantic. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> tell me something we don't know about Don. Um, well, he's quite out there, so I mean, what is there that people don't, in Jamaica don't know about him? <laughs> what an answer. <laughs> he's the real thing. Really? Mm-hmm. 
And you can say this after how many years? Mm -hmm. 30 years next year. 30 years mm -hmm. next year, and he's a real thing. He's a real deal. Wow. He has a heart of gold. Yes, and mm -hmm. done of done. Mm, done of dons. He's a real don. <laughs> real I mean, done. husband, father, son. He's fabulous. Yes, yes. I mm -hmm. and I, I I know his father many many years ago because he worked at Jamming Tail. Mm -hmm. Go for the top floor. That building that mm -hmm. nobody uses anymore. Mm -hmm. As I described as a sick building. Um, but we. He was a mastermind with all the connection to the world because mm -hmm. those days in our business of radio and to make connection for cricket broadcasts mm -hmm. and things like that, we had to go through Jamintel. Mm -hmm. And we actually sometimes went down there and got posted down there for the ticker tape when, they, when the messages coming through on the paper mm -hmm. and they tear them off and see what the messages are. But now people wouldn't know about it. It's all about touching the screen and, mm -hmm. and, and moving on. In the book, you, you, you mentioned you still go on at lunch. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. With my parents? Yes. Every Thursday at 1 o'clock, my parents invite me to lunch. So after therapy, I go and have lunch with them. And it's almost like a, um, my, I entertain through them too. Okay. Because I take the people I love to go and have lunch too. Yes. I'm going to, them, to have lunch with them after this. And oh. my beloved Glynis. Yes, there's beside you has, there, and we're going to get to her lunch. shortly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Herself and my editor, Burl, joined us. Yes. So it's a regular thing that, you know, those that I grow to love to come. Yes, yes, yes. Father yes. Vicente from Missionaries of the Poor, Brother Luima. Yes, yes. Jonathan Burke from the Stroke Foundation. All of us go. Mm -hmm. Marsha. Is yes. that regular? We have our room there. Yeah, Marsha, Marsha, mm -hmm. Marsha, that nurse. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Shereen. Yes, yes. We have our room there, so after we eat, we go and cock up our foot <laughs> in the room and relax. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was something else. You got married, mm -hmm. three children mm -hmm. to show for it, uh, but you worked at Grace Kennedy 10 mm -hmm. years before uh, the Super Dawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, 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 what did you do there? You, you had an MBA in management. Mm -hmm. you, what yes, well, I started off in marketing. I started off at Grace Tours as a management trainee. Grace Tours? Mm -hmm. Okay. Which no longer exists. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. <laughs> right. Remember the name faintly, mm -hmm. Grace right. Tours. They were the transportation. Mm -hmm. They were in um, Airline? cruise ship tours. Cruise ship tours, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, mm -hmm. then you moved on to... Then eventually I went my, wended my way to food, which is really the heartbeat of Grace yes. Kennedy. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, the food. I was the brand manager for the Grace brand, which I think was my most substantial job there. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, let me get to know you private. So you undone a curse at home about um, where, what direction you're taking the food thing into, mm -hmm. and um, I will not have it. No, I mean, we respect each other, and I mean, I have to, you know, I don't pry, you know? Because I respect his professionalism. He can't tell tales out of school, and neither can I. So we have a healthy divide between home and work. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. well, no pillar talk. No pillar talk. No, I mean, no, I mean, no, I mean, as a professional, I couldn't compromise him and ask him to tell me things that are not appropriate, mm -hmm. you know, because it would undermine his own professionalism. And of course, I couldn't say to him things that are, you know, Confidential in my sphere. Yes. Yeah. How has this affected your family? Well, I think that um, it has been stressful for my family. Mm -hmm. I mean, my son Nicholas basically saved my life. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I know. Mm -hmm. My daughter Steffi and Abby. I mean, I think it shook up everybody, you know, and it gave us all a new perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My parents. I mean, we all realize what a privilege it is to be alive. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and to have their mom with mm -hmm. them. Yep. Yes, that's important, especially mm -hmm. us momless people. Um, how, you know, you you poured a lot of um, praise and love on your husband, mm -hmm. but you, I heard you say, I want to be a good wife. I want to be a good mother. I want to. And somebody said to you, but you are doing that already. Mm -hmm. 
that was a relief to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Because you, 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 you're a go-getter. You, 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 you're still a go-getter because a part of the book you mentioned that um, you want your independence. You, 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 you crave for that. And, uh, you know, Don Webby, JFK, JK, Chris Kennedy mm -hmm. um, would no doubt um, earn a living that could support the family. Um, mm -hmm. But you still want yours. Mm -hmm. you, you went to university, your brain mm -hmm. is not a waste. Mm -hmm. You know, so you still want yours. Well, guess what? God wasn't done with me yet. <laughs> or else I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Clearly mm -hmm. not. <laughs> Clearly not. Mm -hmm. Clearly not. And um, you sat down and decided to write a book. How did that happen? Did somebody record you? Did, mm -hmm. did, 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 you know, I've never written a book. Maybe I'll be inspired mm -hmm. to write a book about what, heaven knows. But um, <laughs> how, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. What was the well, process like? I think that I've been spiritually nurtured over the years. I'm a part of a women's Christian ministry, Beautiful Ashes or BFA. You know, I was going to take you out. What is this ashes thing, ma'am? Mm. I mean, why ashes? Because God gives you beautiful ashes. Beautiful ashes? Mm -hmm. Yep. I, you know, I was trying to work it out in my head when mm -hmm. I said ashes, why ashes? It's the most beautiful verse in Isaiah 61, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I must check that out. Mm -hmm. Somebody check out Isaiah 61. Mm -hmm. I want to know, you know. But, it's a yes. beautiful verse. Yes. And I have been discipled and I've been spiritually nurtured within that ministry. Mm -hmm. And basically it has turned my life. It has given greater meaning to my life. Yes, yes, yes. Because along my spiritual journey, the ladies have walked beside me. I've been on Bible studies since 2011. Okay. So you, you, it's, it's not that you found the Lord after your stroke. Mm -mm. You, he was with you mm -hmm. all this time. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to hear from Miss Glynis Salmon about this book and how it comes and how it's moving and what else can be done because the foundation sticks out for me. We'll be right back on Insight. <laughs> Welcome back to Insight, the name of the book, and I feel like a, a salesman, but I'm not. <laughs> My New Normal, Reflections of a Stroke Survivor. We're talking about Hilary Webby's story, um, and she admitted earlier that she did not she never write a book before, um, so how did, did it get to this? Um, we have the publisher, um, it's Glynis Salmon, with us, and um, Ms. Glynis, how did this book move from, and I'm using the NBA term, move from an idea to a product? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm very glad you asked that question because just as Hillary said that God directed her to write the book, I think he sent a production team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so we all were directed. And it started with Burl Francis. Yes. So again, somebody who I know. So yeah, understand when you write your book. I know. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Burl, as you know, is quite an acclaimed yes, yes. Um, communication specialist. Yes, yes. But has also distinguished herself professionally, well before and especially now in later years, as a an editor par excellence. Yes. So she, I don't know, Hillary probably can tell us how you got in mm -hmm. touch with Burl. Mm -hmm. Could you tell? Well, us? um. Christine Randall of Ian Randall Publishers yes. introduced me to Burl, who funnily enough I had met during my previous work life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, right. And okay. then Burl in turn mm -hmm. um, had read the book, or the first draft mm -hmm. of the manuscript, mm -hmm. and brought her expertise, mm -hmm. editorial expertise, to bring it together to what I call a fine point. Yes. And then she got in touch with me because I'm an independent publisher. I have been for, for 40 years in the publishing industry. And Bala Press, my publishing house, was really supposed to be my hobby. Yes. 
for my books. Yes, yes. Okay. But I ended up publishing for others. Yeah. And Burl said to me, Glynis, I have this manuscript for you. You really must publish it. And at the time, I didn't feel I had the time to do it. And I, wasn't, I really wasn't so sure. And she said, Glynis, you have to do this. And she sent me the draft manuscript, and I was hooked. I was really moved. And then I met Hillary, whom, as it turned out, I had met many years before when I, had, um, when I was in advertising. Okay. My career is quite polka Yes, dot. yes. <laughs> Not just check checkered. <laughs> and um, I was moved to write the story, especially so since I, too, had had a stroke two years ago. Hello. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I talk about being stroked by God. Okay. <laughs> because okay. I didn't have any of the fallout because I was in the middle of a stroke when I was taken to the hospital oh. because a friend didn't like how I sounded. Oh, it comes from the sound again. Yes, <laughs> apparently I wasn't sounding good. My voice must have been, my speech must have been slurred, but I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I knew, I was at Andrews. And the, the CAT scan revealed that I had had three earlier smaller ones in the week. And I was in the middle of one. And I was in hospital for about a week and a half. And like Hillary, where I could relate, you really didn't know what was happening to you. So, but like I said, the story is not about me. Yes, the yes. point is that I, was, I, I found a resonance in her story about the stroke. And, and not only that. But when I, when, when I read the manuscript and I recognized that whether or not it is about persons who had a stroke and are surviving or just persons who are going through difficult times, uh, it, could, it could be a physical disability or an emotional disability, but that they can be inspired by this. And I'm always moved when people dare to be vulnerable. I like when people feel free enough to just speak from their own lives and from that authentic space people can as i said i'm using the word again resonance find some resonance and can find the lessons for their own life yeah. so that was my motivation and so i felt all together god brought us yes. together so this was less about uh uh, 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 um, it wasn't a job of work. Yes, yes. It really genuinely, to use a hackneyed phrase, yes. a labor of love. Yes. There are two terms in this book that, uh, that you know, you say, say the, 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 the wow moment. Yes. One of them was the issue of what she called community re-entry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you mean by community re-entry? That is what my doctors told me is the terminology for when you start doing the things you used to do, start getting out into the world again. Yes. Dr. Ned taught me that. Yeah. The community re-entry, you re-entering with a different look, a different perspective. Uh, you spoke of when you went out with Don and to certain no, you, you just gave so much chance in there, yeah. you know, how, how you, you wondered if you were standing too long. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because you were re-entering the community, mm -hmm. uh, you could have stayed home. Uh, but you, you're on this program now, are you fearful? Um, well, I tell you the truth, if, if you caught me some years back, I would not be here, I would be hiding. Because, I mean, the thought of being in the public eye would have been terrifying to me. So I think I've gotten braver yeah. over the years. Because something like this I wouldn't even think about doing. Yes. I, I noted with interest, too, that um, you were asked to even do a lecture on stroke. Well, a presentation. A presentation, mm -hmm. yes. Um, mm -hmm. So you have been re-entering at a different that's level. That's where I met Michelle, who that's was really also mean. doing a presentation on stroke. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And she's going to be part of the foundation too. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Uh -huh. So um, it's persons of like mind and mm -hmm. purpose yes, yep. yes. are, 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 are mm -hmm. going there. This book, um, Madame Sama, is doing well or not? 
Well, the book was recently launched. In yes. fact, it was launched last week yeah. to huge acclaim. And as far as book launches go, I mean, this certainly was a very successful one. We had over 200 mm -hmm. persons there of family, fr family yes. and friends and members of the various yes. allied communities who would be interested in a book such as this. And since then, all we have had is great reviews. Um, they will be, the book will be out in the bookstores. Um, it will be in Sangsters, Kingston Bookshop, Bookophilia, Readers. Amazon? Eventually, it will be on <laughs> yes. Amazon. Actually... And we, will ex we, we certainly expect to have an e-version as well. Oh. However, what is interesting is that it's a network of marketing that is taking place persons who are taking copies here to share among their network of friends yes, yes. and we will be having book gatherings whereby Hillary can um, meet with persons yes. share her story in a more in-depth way yes. in a way that the launch would not allow yes. and cause people to just you know be a part of the discussion because one of the things that came out um, for most people you can well appreciate and for you too is that just how vulnerable we all are as human beings and how our lives can change in a moment. And the question is, how do you treat with the changes? You know? And so the my new normal is Hillary's acceptance that, you know, so I was one way at one point, but then some things have changed. Yes. And I can either live in the past or I can accept it as this is is, and this is my new normal. And I think we need to have those kinds of discussions among ourselves as people. Yes. The other thing too is, um, good heavens. No, I'm that's all right. If you're, if you're missing something, I have a question. <laughs> because I, I found interesting that uh, clearly the market segment that has been targeted is the, the world. It is. By that, um, ever so often she'd show in a little patwa in there, she explains what that is. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you yes, know? yes. So therefore, anybody anywhere in the world can, can be a part of it. So you'll get a little of the flavoring of the Jamaican uh, style, yeah. mm -hmm. and then you can get um, uh, a, break, a, a breakout. But I am asking you now, as a publisher, what does it take to get to publishing a book so you saw the draft yes yeah so wh wh where does it go from there because you know okay. we, we're here to teach everything how to that's cope right. with, a, that's with okay. something that you never have to cope with and how to move on right. from. so just to tell you that there are different categories of publishing okay so hillary's work my new normal would fall into what we'd call general or trade General. Um, general or trade publishing, okay. trade book publishing. Okay. So you would have had textbook publishing, early childhood, primary, secondary, to some extent tertiary, though tertiary would come under academic publishing and um, that whole wider milieu of, yes. of publishing works would come under trade or general. And if you really want to fine tune it, it would come under inspirational works, which brings me to the point I had forgotten and wanted to make yes. that very often, so much of inspirational material mm -hmm. that is in that general book yeah. category comes from abroad, and we don't hear enough of our own Caribbean stories. Yes, yes. We don't hear enough of our own local Jamaican inspirational stories, and they are bound. So to have Hillary's work out is really quite a boon yes. to the Jamaican publishing industry but also to just Caribbean literature. I, 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 I pondered myself, where mm. would I put this yeah. book on which shelf? Yes. And um, as a former teacher myself, I would say it would be a, a book that you'd have to read in a class to come and tell me what are the messages here, what are the So that is here. why, this is why it would be general or trade book. Ah. Be, so while I have, I, I would also place it as inspirational. Yes, it, it also belongs in that wider group. Ah. So it would be a book indeed that would be encouraged 
for students to read yeah. and they can do a book review on That's and so great. on That's and great. encourage their skills, their literary skills and so on. Yes. Um, now, in terms of the question you asked, what are the steps? So you get the manuscript. A publisher always, especially with general trade books, it has to hit it, you. It, yes, hit you somewhere. And thereafter, you know, um, the whole editorial process. Mm -hmm. So um, Bert Francis would have played the role of uh, developmental editor. So in other words, it wasn't just, people tend to think that editing is about just proofing. Yes. But she would have actually taken the manuscript, probably done some research to ensure that there's more substance to it, um, probably rewrite some things, etc., yes. etc. Et um, after it goes through that whole editorial process, which I would have managed um, that process, then we go through the, the, the production phase um, of designing, and that goes through several proofing stages. I'm going to, going to ask you to hold here because of the time that sure. I'm running out of. And I want to challenge you, Ms. Webby. At the time of our foundation, there's going to be a launch. Mm -hmm. If you could certainly let me know about it. Yes, definitely. I would love to be a part of that mm -hmm. and uh, the publicity of that. But I wouldn't want to go unless I read something mm -hmm. from the book. Mm -hmm. And um, it's found on page 154. I still have some way to go to really regain full independence. But where I am now is a very long way from when I was flat on my back. Mm -hmm. I can't read anymore. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Bless you, Miss. Thank you so much. And that will be all for Insight. This is Webby.